You're listening to Ricky and Jimmy on Relationships, the show where we uncover the thoughts and behaviors that are sabotaging your relationship and what you can do about it. Jimmy and I are passionate about sharing the ways that imperfect partners like you and I can shift unhealthy relational dynamics and create closeness. So welcome, drop your defenses and open your heart, eyes, and ears. Let's learn how to be the best partner we can be together. We're back. <laughs> We're back. Episode Wait. 11. I was just going to say, I don't even remember at this point. We're double I'm digits. Keeping so. track. Okay, yeah. we're keeping track. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually really excited about today's episode, and I hope that the people are excited too. Because, so what we're going to talk about today is we're just going to kind of go over what um, anxious attachment is, why it's happening, um, some things we can do about it, plus what, what is avoidant attachment. We're just going to kind of do a refresher just to remind everyone in the um, beginning of the episode and then transition into the anxious avoidant dynamic one of yes. my favorite topics because that is let me tell you something so when when emily and i went through all of our issues and mm -hmm. when we were in counseling and when i started to read a bunch of um, gottman and sue johnson sue johnson especially mm -hmm. talks about if anybody wants to pick up um hold me tight by sue johnson's blue um yeah. She talks a lot about yeah. She talks a lot about anxious attachment, anxious and avoidant. The dance that we get in, that we get caught mm -hmm. in, and um, so, anywho, I think that that's super helpful because I know that that helped us as soon as we started to realize that there were um, there were similarity. Like, if anyone hasn't really, if anyone d doesn't know anything about anxious or avoidant attachment, the things that we might say, you usually you will either say, oh, wait, that sounds a lot like me, or mm -hmm. that definitely sounds like my partner. <laughs> yeah. Right. And before right. I forget, before I forget, you will be tempted to potentially label your partner like, oh, that's my partner. So we want to, we want to discourage anybody from just immediately labeling someone else. We're not, we're not, we're not doing this just so you can like, label somebody else like hey i, I figured out your problem frank yeah. i figured it out you know <laughs> and so, hey the the danger in labeling our partner too is falling into um the idea that this is who they are and this is who they'll always be that's yeah. another reason why these labels are not helpful because um i think you and i both were very clearly one way Yep. as far as attachment theory would be concerned. And now we are very much not that way, or at least yeah. a lot better than we used to be. Sure. So a label is not a great way to look at it. And it's not really a fair thing to do to your spouse considering or partner considering we can find our way out of these out of these behavioral patterns. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. The other problem with labeling is that um, it's it's always easier to label them rather yeah. than to really look inward. It's always yeah. easier to just keep pointing the finger at them. And sometimes when we label, sometimes it's good to label and say, oh, this is what we're dealing with. This is the dynamic that we're stuck yeah. in here. And I want to like get us out of it. Um, yeah, but, but, other uh, times, but I think you're right you know, that the, the propensity to label our partner like distracts us from yes, our own Yes, very much so. So Ricky and I are, are always accountability first. Like let's mm -hmm. own our own junk if this if something resonates with you that we're talking about with you then that like let's own our slice of the pie let's not just mm -hmm. let's even if even if we blame them for 75 percent of the relationship problems <laughs> that still means that what are we doing about our 25 percent um, sure so i think anyways. that also um your your work with accountability for yourself and my work with accountability has been the thing that has turned our relationships around for sure I, Account it accountability has, it has for me yeah Radical Account accountability. Radi radical accountability. It should should that should be the name of our podcast. It should be changed. It should have. Well, I don't um, know. Nobody would listen then. Nobody wants. <laughs> that's a hard sell. <laughs> that's all, it really is a hard sell. It but is. It, at the end of the day, um, accountability is everything. I mean, mm -hmm. we should aim personally just to be accountable and hold ourselves responsible for our own behaviors and reactions and emotions and. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that really goes a long way. If you if you have two partners who actually take responsibility and hold hold oh, themselves man. accountable, you can change yeah. the world. I mean, mutual accountability. Mutual that's accountability. Some magic gosh. right there. Can we make right? some T-shirts that say mutual accountability? I, I'd Good wear that. Night. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> just how about okay. I interview cool. for you just a second, and you can you'll it'll come it'll come naturally. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll let's try that. let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, 
how does one develop anxious, insecure, anxious attachment? Oh, that's a wonderful question. Okay. Um, when we're babies, and by babies, I mean zero to 18 months, this stuff is wired very, very young for us. We are responding to how responsive our parents are to our needs. So we're a baby and we're feeling hunger and we cry. We're paying attention really closely to how quickly they respond to us, how loving they are about our distress. Um, and um, because of those behaviors that our parents, the, the ways that our parents treat us when we're babies, um, it kind of wires our brain to decide whether or not the world is going to be responsive to our needs, to, to where whether or not the people in our lives are going to be responsive to our needs, whether or not we feel like we deserve being cared for and paid attention to. Um, and from that, we get kind of three major ways that people go with that. Um, I'll start with the secure because that's the most popular and the easiest to understand. Um, right. Secure attachment is what presents itself when those babies find that parents are very responsive to their needs. Every, almost every time I cry, and it's not almost every, it's like at least 60% of the time or more. When right. I cry, I'm being swooped up, I'm being fed, I'm being changed. My parent seems to be very responsive to the things that bother me. If I am sad, they're showing me that that's okay and different ways to deal with that. Um, that's secure attachment. Those are some lucky individuals. Um, and that's not to say that if you don't identify with that, that your parents were terrible. I don't want right, to say right, that. Right. Um, it, if that were the case, every single sibling would have the same attachment style, right, I would think. Right. And that's um, certainly not it. Um, right. So you babies, can have a propensity to... You can have a propensity to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and um, that does, yeah. Even if your parents gave the consistent consistent care to all of your siblings, yes. you might be anxious. And Absolutely. And your brother might be secure. Yeah. Or avoidant. Yeah. yeah right, um, right. Um, I, for example, me, I am right. a very anxious person. I'm very, very sensitive. I notice really closely when something doesn't go my way and it alarms me. My alarm bells are really sensitive. Um, so it almost doesn't matter how attentive my parents were. I would be a baby that would notice, wow, they took one second longer to respond to me. So that yeah. kind of wires my brain in a way, in an anxious way, right? Gosh, right. I just skipped right over secure. So the secure babies feel like the world yeah. is going to take care of me. Everything's cool. Yeah. Right? When I get into a romantic relationship, if I present a problem to them, they're probably going to swoop in and comfort me and everything's going to be great. Can I That's interrupt secure. you real quick? Please do. I feel like I'm kind of derailing here. You did a great. <laughs> no, you're doing great. I just wanted okay. to, I wanted to get your opinion on this because it was just mulling around in my head. Okay. Sometimes initially, when I would think of secure attachment, I incorrectly thought these are the people that are, uh, that like their relationships are going to go fine, but that's not the case. Like secure people, when we say yeah. secure, we don't mean like that they are, um, we don't necessarily, it doesn't mean perfectly healthy. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. No, it so, doesn't. So, so where I was going with that is, mm -hmm. would you say it feels to me like when it comes to secure attachment, these are people that are, um, would you, would, you, would you say comfortable, more comfortable with closeness? Because like, yes. we'll get into it later, but like mm -hmm. neither the anxious or the avoidant is really completely comfortable with closeness, are they? Yeah, bingo. No, you nailed yeah. it. Um, so, thank so, you for so, that. So secure, so secure people, they're just more comfortable with, they, they, they can trust easily Yada, yada, yada. Yes. Okay. No, that's great. I think a, a, a good sentence to identify a mostly secure attacher would be um, intimacy is comfortable and something I enjoy. I love and that. not, yeah, not something that yeah. gives me any fear whatsoever. Right. Um, they also okay. tend in romantic relationships to, if, if they notice, like in the early parts of dating, if they notice that somebody is not responding well to them, they lose mm. interest. That's yes. not interesting to them. That's that not something that they want to pursue. Mm -hmm. Yes. So those they're are the able to detach folks. easier. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, this isn't right for me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They don't feel the need. And like I said, I don't want to give too, away too many, but they don't feel the need mm -hmm. to like prove 
that they're worthy to be totally pers- pursued. They are, they're, and they're, they oh, are. this is perfect. The reason yeah. for that is because they're looking for the familiarity of their oh. childhood. It's familiar to them that when they have an issue or a problem, Someone somebody helps them out with that. Yeah. And so if when they're they... not getting responded to, then that mm-hmm. they recognize that as well. This isn't right. Right. This is unfamiliar, and unfamiliar is scary for humans. We don't like unfamiliar territory. We don't know how to respond to that. Right. So a secure attacher would get out of dodge. They don't want to deal with that. Yep. Um. So let's let's uh, talk for a second about my my audience, the anxious attachers. Yes. Um, the anxious for hearts. For the unfamiliar. Yes, the anxious hearts. For the unfamiliar, um, my little corner of the internet is the anxious hearts guide on Instagram and TikTok. And that's where I talk about anxious attachment. So these are the babies. They're very sensitive. Um, You also wrote a book. That's really good. Just in case anybody wrote The Anxious Hearts Guide. Just in case you want to pick it up. (laughs) Ricky's website. That's where. Or on Amazon. Yeah. And Amazon. Yeah. Um, So we've got the babies that are are anxious in general, right? Okay. We're we're sensitive to somebody not responding quickly to our needs. and we're also noticing when someone does respond to our needs. We just notice everything, us anxious yes. attachers. And because of that, we feel like the only way that the world is going to be a safe place is if I'm always on high alert to see what I can do to bring somebody close because it really hurts when they run away or if they're so, not noticing my needs. So during childhood, would you say mm-hmm. it, on average, anxious attachers had some sort of some form of inconsistent love yes. they couldn't they couldn't really depend on now that's not to say that their parents were labeling their parents as not dependable like we would i wouldn't you know say that oh but, well how about this they yeah. didn't feel like they had consistency, correct they didn't right? feel like it that doesn't that's, mean yeah. that they did or they didn't they correct. didn't feel like it correct so. so mm-hmm. so because they had that inconsistency it, it it's easier for my ra- brain to wrap around once we start talking about all the tendencies, if you think mm-hmm. about it from the standpoint of, if you have, a f- if you if you weren't given consistency, and that's what you're mm-hmm. craving, yeah. then it's easy to think about all the little things that they do to try to bridge that gap, or to try to close that gap, or try to get that consistency, yeah. because that's what they're craving is consistent yes. safety. And if yes. they don't feel that, then when once we go into the tendencies, that'll it'll make a little bit more sense. Like, yeah. oh, that's why they're doing that and that and that, because they're really just trying to get that closeness or they're trying to like Absolutely. make sure that that inconsistency doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And um, Is that let true? me pile some more complexity. Yeah, you nailed it, Jimmy. Okay. Um, let me pile some more complexity on here, too. I love it. Um, the anxious baby and the anxious individual does not trust themselves to be able to put themselves in a good, safe position either. Mm. Um, and most of this uh, is happening subconsciously. All of it. Yeah, yeah. all of yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> just, to, um, just, to, just to tell people that like, yeah. most, most of the time we're not aware that we're- No, having, we're running we're, on autopilot with this. Um, secure babies, because of all this consistency and love, uh, they feel brave and independent, um, but also able to depend on others. Um, these They're are very secure, secure babies, you said. Yeah, right? the okay, secure yeah. babies. They're very secure in their ability to take care of themselves and others' ability to take care of them. So then we've okay. got the poor anxious babies, myself yeah. included, um, who don't have any self-trust. Um, we feel tragically it, incapable of fulfilling our own needs. And that's part of the reason why we're also so hyper vigilant for whether or not our caregivers or our significant others are paying attention to us and caring for us. Got it. Okay. And that's why we would have a tendency to overanalyze things Mm -hmm. and be seen as a little bit more clingy. Yes. Our safety is outsourced. And so we're paying super close attention to what other people are doing so that we can bring that safety close to us. Okay. Is it, Mm -hmm. would it be appropriate to go into some things of like, of like you might have like the like the old Jeff Foxworthy bit like you might be right oh yeah now. like no, you let's might do that. you might have anxious attachment if you yeah. notice these tendencies show up in your dating relationships. Yes. Do I just rattle off my list? I've got a great one. This comes from page twenty eight of my book, by the way, uh, for anybody uh, yeah. playing along at home. Um, if you feel like you've got a constant need for closeness or intimacy, here's your sign. Right? You're you may be anxiously attached. Yeah. Um, if you feel hypersensitive to your partner's moods and actions, 
Uh, if you have a tendency to kind of get controlling when you feel like that closeness is threatened, um, if you feel preoccupied by a fear of abandonment, if you're constantly checking to see where they are or if they're leaving, mm. um, anxious attachers tend to prioritize a partner's wants and needs before their own uh, because keeping them close and keeping them happy is, is how we feel safe. Um, if you feel like you're unable to give a partner what you might consider healthy space, that would be an mm. anxious tendency. Uh, overgiving, dismissing the things that we want and need, excessive worrying and catastrophizing. I just, this list holds a special place in my heart because I was every single bullet point, not yeah, yeah, even yeah, five yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Um, anxious attachers often adopt a partner's hobbies or interests in order to increase mm. closeness. Um, yep. Abandoning our own, right? Um, we feel deeply uncomfortable expressing the things that hurt us in a relationship because we're afraid of their reaction. So we sure. tend to suppress those. Um, we often become overly dependent on the relationship. Uh, we're vigilant for signs of abandonment or disloyalty. Um, we need it. We have a constant need to please and gain our partner's approval, poor sense of boundaries. We need frequent reassurance, sometimes excessive reassurance. Right. Um, we let our partners make and set the tone of the relationship. Uh, we fin feel like we have to work to keep somebody interested in us. Um, the icing on the cake here too is if you feel uncomfortable receiving intimacy and that's the mm. one that kind of gets people going that's not me i love intimacy except if you loved intimacy you wouldn't have any interest in partners who you felt like you had to keep track of and wow. watch right that was yeah. a really really tough pill for me to swallow as an anxious attacher um when i started to notice that when my partner came toward me and did hold my hand or something, uh -huh. I noticed that I actually felt fear instead of a sense of satisfaction. So, That's so not a runaway fear, but a fear that it would end or that I didn't deserve it. That's what I was just about to say. Those two things mm -hmm. that you just said, I hear that yeah. a lot with anxious attachment is um, they're kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. They exactly. can't get comfortable. They can't get mm -hmm. comfortable because they're, because yes. even this if it's good right soon. now, this mm -hmm. is, even if it's good now, think about it. If you have a fear of abandonment and a yeah. fear of inconsistent love, mm -hmm. then, then of course you're not going to be enjoying the now. You're going to be no. still focused on the anxiety about, yeah. well, well, when is this going to end? What can I do mm -hmm. to prevent it to ending? How can yes. I manipulate this situation to where they'll still see? And then the second yeah. thing you said is so important where you said, I, um, you said something about feeling valuable or, or like, I don't feel worthy of it. I don't feel like I deserve and that, the intimacy. And that, that is I'm so getting. true mm -hmm. with the anxious, yeah. um, plight yeah. or you know problem it is it is a plight is, yeah isn't that is sad when you get that intimacy um there's a part of you that's like i don't really deserve this yeah you know, this doesn't or, feel right this that's doesn't how feel I right remember. and that goes back to that from from familiarity that you mm -hmm. mentioned exactly earlier. exactly because the child um the child in the crib who feels inconsistently cared for um they're not going to think my parent doesn't have the right tools to respond to my needs they're going to blame it on themselves. Absolutely. So that's what, where we get what, that. What, what must be wrong with me mm -hmm. that this person doesn't? Exactly. Yeah. It all goes back. And that's one of the biggest problems with um, all of these insecure attachments is, is uh, it can, mm -hmm. there can be so much low self-worth and so much low self-esteem. And that's something that yeah. we all have. We all have to pay attention to that. I mean, yeah. like how you view yourself is so important. And the more I study all this stuff, the more I see that like you have to, I'm not saying because it gets tricky really quickly where you're like, well, you have to love yourself completely before you, before you get into a relationship. Not yeah. No, I'm not saying that. Absolutely not. We yeah. can learn to love ourselves in a, within a relationship, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you have to have some level of, you have to know your value and your worth yeah. or else I promise you, you will let someone else determine it for you. Right. And when or they you'll start, be trying to earn it from them. Or you'll be you trying know? to earn it. And, it, and mm -hmm. those are two disastrous paths that so <laughs> yeah. many people don't know that they're on. Yes. And, um, and that goes back to the poor boundaries. The reason you don't have any boundaries is because you think to yourself, well, if I set a boundary, I just made a video on this the other day. And I said, if you set a, mm -hmm. you're worried that if you set a boundary, they'll leave you. Mm -hmm. But really the sad truth is that they're supposed to leave you or right. you're supposed to right. leave them. Like, right. So let's get back to the, the yeah. secure attacher would can say, I, 
Can I read oh, no. something really quickly? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You're, you're excited. No, I love it. I'm sorry. Can, I just wanted to read this one thing. <laughs> this is from Jillian Tarecki, which oh, you love. Who we, we both love. Yeah. We both love. Okay. This is so important when it comes to anxious attachment and people like thinking like, oh, I must be anxious attached because my partner is showing a lot of avoidance signs, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. She says, there's nothing wrong with you for being anxious when they withdraw. You're not mm. crazy for you're not crazy for feeling crazy when they don't communicate. It's not because you have anxious attachment that you feel anxious when they give you mixed signals. It's not mm -hmm. your fear of abandonment that makes you uneasy with a lot of time apart. The only thing that's wrong with you is that you don't validate your feelings and stand up for what you know you deserve. I love that. S stop diagnosing yourself for being human. And that's so that. important to remember just because someone shows you yes. just because, you know, someone's withdrawing and you're anxious about that. That doesn't mean that you have anxious attachment. Like, yeah, totally. I'm glad that you said that. And here's yeah. a here's a sentence that will help anybody worrying about that. A secure attacher is bothered by inconsistency. So if you're yeah, if I you're saying that. I'm bothered by inconsistency, I must be anxiously attached. Or are you bothered by something that everybody's bothered by? Thank right? you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now the so, people that the people that tend to stay in like situationships where they're like, mm -hmm. I don't feel fulfilled, but I also don't I don't know how to navigate this. That's, that's a super classic anxious attachment. Super classic. Yeah. Like if you're like, why am I in this three month, four month, and I can't like define the relationship because like what if they leave me? Yep. You might have anxious attachment. Yeah, those are the people that should be following my page because they're going to benefit from <laughs> Absolutely. learning okay. more I interrupted about you. This. I want to hear no, what you're No, that's okay. Saying. So I guess um, I'm going to wrap this up with a um, the quintessential anxious attacher sentence is, nobody can get close enough to me. Wow. That's, that was the, that would be a sentence. When I read that sentence, it was like getting hit with a sack of bricks. I was like, yes, that is how I feel. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say one more thing because I think that anxious, especially when it comes to anxious and avoidant mm -hmm. attachments, um, anxious attachment tends to either have a neutral connotation or maybe even a, I wouldn't say it has a negative connotation, even mm -hmm. though the word anxious, people do think like, well, that's not great. But, right. uh, but avoidant attachment a hundred percent has a negative connotation right well let's yeah. humanize them do you want to do that right now because well, what I, I was going to say yeah. about it just real quick about anxious mm -hmm. attachment is like is like what you said earlier where it's not that we're like trying to shame them or demonize them or dehumanize them but but like mm -hmm. they don't trust closeness either right they they, they want closeness and and you know but and they're striving to get that closeness but it's just like what you just said where it's like I don't, they actually, what did you say about close enough? Like they can't get no close enough. No one can get close enough to me. Yeah. Like I want, I would get them even closer if I could, but it never and happens. And I don't know if you would agree with this, but even if an anxious attacher got with a secure attached person, mm -hmm. they would, that secure attached person would be able to give them the closeness that they need, but an, but an unhealed Sometimes. anxious attacher. <laughs> Yeah. If you have unhealed and anxious attachment, you will you will constantly be testing that person mm -hmm. to show you like I need you to show me I need you I need constant reassurance that you're not yeah. going to leave me. And unfortunately, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where it, it gets does. so annoying to the secure person mm -hmm. that they eventually leave you because you were so right. clingy, you were so over you were so like manipulative to the point of like yeah. I need you to reassure me that you're not going to leave me. You're right. And so I'm kind of like drilling on you. And then that person's like, well, I'm not comfortable with this at all. Yeah. And then they leave and the anxious is like, well, this is why I have to do all these things because people always leave me. So, I, see, I see what you're saying that yeah. sometimes anxious attachers um, are kind of painted in a positive light. Well, I'm anxiously attached because all I want is love. And that's exactly. all, all I want right. is closeness. And, um, and we're trying to say without shaming you that it's actually, yeah. it's a destructive way of, re of acting you. in a relationship that can push away secure people as well. So it's fear, it's fear based. It is. Yes, exactly. Yes, so yes. that's the reason that we want to address these things and we want to get yes. better at them because they, they really, no matter who you're with, there's not some magical, perfect partner that's going to cure you. You yep. need to work on this stuff within yourself because it, it's destructive no matter who you're with. Yeah. And the last mm -hmm. thing I'll say is that you can heal your anxious attachment with a secure oh, yeah. person, but you also, that also, you know, might just push them away. Like this could go both ways. It all yeah. depends on you and how you're going to respond. And obviously there's different uh, 
levels of there's mild and severe yeah. and yada yada. Anyways, oh, that's a great continue. thing to say too. Before we before we launch into avoid an attachment, um, these things aren't. Hmm, I don't think it's on a, it's hard, on a spectrum. It's yeah. on a spectrum. So I don't think you can find people who are only one thing. You're gonna have anxious tendencies and you're also going to have secure yes. tendencies. We're yes. talking about people who tend toward one category far more than the other. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's talk about the avoidant attachers, whom I, I love, love so, so much. I'm gonna say I know that. You do. I do. I um that's my other those are my other people. The anxious people are my people, but the avoidance are my other people. Um yeah. so the avoidant baby laying in the crib, um their perception of their parents and the world around them is that it is not receptive to their needs at all, right? Right, they're, right. they're noticing a level of reception that's so low that they might as well not even pay attention to it. So in their mind, their safety is themselves. This yeah. creates a hyper independence and a distrust of other people. Their safe place is themselves. Um, yep. This sometimes turns them into really high achievers. Um, yep. It turns them into people who uh, sometimes, on the surface at least, seem to have great self-esteem because they feel very capable, very right. able to take care of themselves. Um, this is massively attractive to the people who don't feel like they can take care of themselves. The anxious yes. folks. Yes. Um, the people who are a little bit more dependent, a little yep, bit more. They, yep. they, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so maybe um, I, I have to admit I'm significantly less well researched in the avoidant yeah. mindset. Um, it's okay. So I think I'm just going to launch right into the list of qualities uh, that yeah, if you're listening be great. to this. Okay, cool. If you're listening to this and you relate to these, you may lean more avoidantly yeah. attached. Um, if this sounds like your partner, don't fret because there's ways out of this one too. Um, an avoidant yeah. attacher uh, is probably has a constant need for autonomy and independence because that's yeah. what feels safe to them. Yeah. Uh, they have a particular insensitivity to their partner's moods or actions, not because they're cruel, but because when they were young, it didn't do them any good to pay attention to other people's moods and actions because that wasn't taking care of them anyway. Yep. Um, they have a tendency to pull away when they sense a partner getting too close because in their mind, somebody else interfering with the situation messes it up. Uh, they believe that a partner wants more than they can give them. I'm kind of sad that that's the fourth bullet point because that that's the, um, that's the quintessential avoidant attacher sentence mm. is people want more from me than I can yes. give them. Yes, yeah. especially romantic partners. Absolutely, especially yeah. romantic partners. Uh, they pride themselves on not needing anyone. Uh, they have a yes. tendency to withdraw when they feel threatened. Um, let's see. They are preoccupied by a fear of enmeshment, which means yes. they lose their identity. That's uh, huge. Mm -hmm. uh, closeness makes them feel smothered. They do tend to prioritize their own wants and needs before their partner. But as yes. I said, that's because that's a baby who it didn't do them any good to pay attention to other people's needs and wants. Yes. Um, they're very uncomfortable opening up. Um, opening up makes them feel vulnerable to attack. So they tend to close up. Um, they minimize the importance of emotional expression, but that's also a vulnerability thing. Putting our For emotions sure. out there is vulnerable. So they tend to not express themselves that way. They're far more logical. Yep. Um, it's hard for them to trust and ask for help. They might minimize their need for intimacy. Um, they often ignore or diminish a partner's attempts to increase closeness. Again, seeking safety. Um, they're, they tend to be overly rigid with their relationship rules. Compromise is hard for them. They feel that, they're all, that people are always going to let them down. Um, privacy is very important to them, so they're very guarded. Um, sometimes they might make derogatory statements about attachment or relationships or monogamy. Um, they tend to feel more comfortable keeping their options open romantically. This is back to the situationship. If, if the the person that doesn't yes. want to define yes. the relationship after four Pro months, they avoid, avoid an attachment. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, um, keep going. No, that's great. I love these additions. Um, they'll shut down when they're faced with conflict. Uh, Absolutely. They tend to appear very confident, strong, and in control, which I just have to say as an 
anxious attacher is sexy as hell. <laughs> Just saying. So anyway, if you're wondering why you're drawn to these people, they do seem very independent and in control. Yes. Um, they have an unrealistic view of how a relationship should be. Same as the anxious attachers. Um, we yes. all tend to we tend to glom on to some fantasy idea of how things yes. could be instead of looking at it realistically. Yep. Um, this is a this one makes me sad. Brace yourself, anxious hearts. Uh, <laughs> avoidance will use emotional or physical distancing strategies to keep others at bay, and they're more comfortable when they're single. They're hesitant yeah. to commit to people. Okay, I love your list. Um, Thank you probably you. already you probably already touched on. I'll just I'll just talk about some of mine. I wrote down okay. they tend to like numb their feelings with distractions or work. Yes, um, emotions a, bad. Yeah, they, emotion, <laughs> emotions if you think bad. About it, production good. Yeah. <laughs> if you think about it, there was never a reason why they should uh, elevate like the importance of emotions or feelings. Nope. It they never, never did, did anything them, for them. Never did any mm -hmm. favors for them. It, no. To be honest with you, in their mind, subconsciously, it only led to more pain or neglect. Really? Yep. Them opening up and being vulnerable. This mm -hmm. is this is where where if you if you're in an anxious avoidant dynamic and you've kind of mm -hmm. thought of your partner as like you're so angry that they are the way they are. We understand yeah. that you're angry, but this is part of where you should think about why they do the things that they do and it's yeah. not always malicious it's not oh and it's i from would a say malicious, it's almost yeah. never malicious right they're, but they're, it's so easy when you're in that spot to think yeah. they're they're uh, they're intentionally doing this you know? sure when, you, when you're um, hurt and you're lonely and you're angry it's yes. so easy to feel really upset that they aren't showing the emotion that you so yep. desperately want from someone but yep. um this is an individual seeking safety um, and reacting Absolutely. out of fear. It's not somebody who's saying, you know how I can really hurt them? Not showing emotion today. They're not doing that. Right. Um, I wrote down they have a they they have a tendency to bury their feelings and needs. You yeah. you already touched on a lot a oh, lot of these. Let me let me add to that. Yeah. This is something that I do that I have read about avoidant attachers. They yeah. tend to be unaware of those buried emotions. So it's not oh. just that they oh, feel absolutely. sad and they're stuffing it down. They don't even realize that they're stuffing no, it down. No, they don't even not even not even an iota of mm -hmm. yeah. There there's when it comes to self awareness, especially yeah. like emotional intelligence, self awareness. It's very low. Yeah. Very very low. Um, and that's not and, to say that they can't grow it. They can grow right. it. They're not Absolutely. hopeless, but in the beginning, before they dive into this stuff, they the the awareness is not there. But it's important for us to remember that they're doing this. They're shutting down, or they're they have their walls up because mm -hmm. initially, when we take the when we take your mom's magnifying glass out and we look yes, at them as a small child, ray. the shrink ray. <laughs> when we look at them as a small child, yeah. them opening up and being vulnerable only led to more pain. So mm -hmm. it only makes sense that their brain would say, hey, let's just shut those things down. Like, let's not do yeah. those anymore. It's a um, human impulse yeah. to try to escape from pain. It's yes. that, yeah, so and when, that and, makes and, sense. And at the end of the day, if you're look, the way that you're looking at anxious and avoidant mm -hmm. um, is really through the lens of like pain and, they're, and seeking yeah. safety, seeking safety yeah. from pain. And everything exactly. that you list is just different manifestations of a, of the same fear yep. or the same desire to seek safety. So yes, um, well said, Jimmy, that was great. Let me hit you. You're giving me way too much. Comp. So <laughs> let me hit you with some things that you might hear your avoidant partner say. Okay. Um, um, nothing I do is good enough for you. Yeah. Yeah, How about, but, and that, that's um, their worldview too, that they, exactly. that they are not able to do things that make people come and support yep. them. So. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times there is a, in either one of these, there is a self-worth and self-esteem issues like we talked about. Yeah. And a lot of, and a lot of avoidance, um, there's a lot of shame in there. And especially yeah. in romantic relationships, one of the reasons that they don't, they, they, they can't open up for a number of different reasons, but they're also terrified to do it in a in the wrong way like there's there's a lot of shame and they're like i don't want to be seen as a failure they're yeah. they're so scared to be seen as a failure that it, it would it would be better if i just didn't engage 
Right. But, but, so, but from the anxious, we'll get into the uh, the dance later. Yeah. You can understand. Anybody listening can understand how triggering that would be for the other partner. So. Anyways. Oh yeah, I can. Um, um, in my past, when I before I had addressed any of this, I can remember many times using the sentence, "Why won't you just try for me?" or "Why won't you just try for us?" And yeah. the trying part can be just downright terrifying for an avoidantly attached individual. I wrote this down. This could apply to both partners. Um, you don't feel like you can be yourself because you're scared that they won't accept you. Mm -hmm. And I think subconsciously that's going on a lot in, in either one of these insecure. I can't fully show them who I am. Yep. Because, because they if they see it, they're going to run. If they, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. they're going to reject me. Yeah. Because the avoidant still has a fear of abandonment in there as well, just like the yeah. anxious. Oh, it's yeah. true. And um, this is a great place to mention also that avoidant people want love. I Absolutely. Know it, it doesn't look like they do, but deep down they dream about a scenario where they can feel love and intimacy with someone. They just don't because know how to go about that. Because that's a question that you, you probably get a lot of times mm -hmm. when it comes to the anxious avoidance getting together. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a honeymoon phase where things are great. And then yeah. all of a sudden, before they those, pull away, <laughs> yeah, before yeah. they pull away. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're natural. They, they start to get afraid of that closeness and that enmeshment and they're losing yeah. their independence. And so they're pulling away and they're giving you inconsistency. And yes, uh, <laughs> this right here is where the yeah. angry hordes of the internet will accuse that person of being a narcissist. Exactly. But yeah. I want to throw out in defense of my, my avoidant folks, um, that their initial coming on strong is before their fear kicks in. Yeah, and absolutely. then the fear kicks in and they're like, wait a second, I have to protect yep. myself. This isn't a safe situation. And while we're on the subject real quick, because we're not mm -hmm. going to spend too much time on it because we don't need to. Right, the, right. The, the big differences between true narcissism, which we mm -hmm. all can remember, is relatively rare. Um, incredibly as a, rare. As in, as in borderline personality disorder. Like this right. is, we're talking about a personality disorder of narcissism, <laughs> not like narcissistic traits. We're talking about sure. narcissism or like, right. you know, the personality disorder. The difference between that and avoidant attachment is like you've said, intention. Mm -hmm. They don't, avoidance do not have the intention to manipulate you or yeah. uh, they don't have the intention to like demean you, belittle you. Absolutely. Um, does that make sense? So it does. And they also um, frequently will have the thought, why aren't I better at this? Absolutely. Why are relationships so hard for me? I don't understand why I and can't you know just do this like everyone else. And you know, what's crazy is like as anxious hearts mm -hmm. during conflict, it's so difficult to, to, to be fully present. But isn't it funny that when we really look at what the avoidant is saying to us, there's, there's a lot of that shame in there. I mean, just yeah. think about, just think about when they say, I'm always the, why am I always the bad guy or nothing I do will ever be good enough for you. And yeah. then as the anxious heart, we're triggered and we immediately launch into some other thing. But what if we actually dissected that? Like, wait, do you, do you honestly believe that like nothing you do is good enough for me? I mean, what yeah. if we actually believed what they were saying when they were yeah. maybe in that moment of, of emotional reactivity? What if they're actually sharing their heart? And like, we're not, yeah. and we're missing it. We're missing right, it. Right, right. Because we're just ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Can I say one more thing real quick? And I'll, uh, and then I want to yeah. let I, I said, I just want to touch on what you said about conflict. I wrote down during conflict, avoidance want to make your bad feelings go away. They mm -hmm. like, um, they like to make, I, I don't know why I wrote that twice. They're, so they either, <laughs> they either get defensive, so they don't look like the bad guy, mm -hmm. or they, um, or they'll dismiss, they'll dismiss your feelings. Um, and they'll yeah. kind of, they'll kind of bury your feelings because that's what they're so used to doing to their own. And that's how uh, they make their bad feelings point. go away. Great point. Diminish it. Uh, yep. Yeah. But yeah. what they don't realize is that that only leaves you feeling more alone and more abandoned. Absolutely. Too. And to the angry internet hordes out there with their pitchforks and their, and their flames, yeah. uh, they'll say gaslighter. This is a gaslighter. They're not, they're sure. not acknowledging my, but truly, um, they're, they're treating you the way that they treat themselves. And that's yep. the only tool in their kit. That's they're the not only doing tool they it have. to make you feel crazy. I, I'm not saying it's justified or helpful. Nope, nope. It's hurtful, and, oh, but, or, but yeah, there's a why behind they, their there's a why. actions. Right. Yeah. And it's not because they want to knock you down. You know, it's not because they're malicious. Now, right. don't get me wrong. When they get backed into a corner and they they're lashing out, you know, like 
dismissively invalidation and all that. Yeah. They're so uncomfortable with what's going on right now yeah. that they'll that they're really just like triggered. I mean, they're they're oh. what John Gottman would call flooded. Where yeah, and know, that's going to look like an on, animal that's yeah. got its teeth bared. I Absolutely. mean, it's, it's going to look like that, but because they're so uncomfortable mm -hmm, with this mm -hmm. with this conflict with conflict because right. they're because of their fear of being seen as a failure totally. and all this other stuff that, that that's all being triggered in this moment. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, let's, so let's talk a little bit about what happens when these two folks get together because do they it. do. A it lot. sounds like a wonderful time. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's really the anxious, yeah. the internet um, and popular literature has often called it the anxious avoidant trap, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, myself and other people who who read about this stuff all the time and love it uh, we're trying to get rid of that phrase because it's sure. really it's depressing it doesn't paint a real a realistic picture um, I actually love your background noise Jimmy if you want to <laughs> you can edit this part out but you can keep your mic on I like hearing that you're there well right? sometimes my chair is so uh, oh. squeaky <laughs> okay I don't want to I don't want I don't I know <laughs> yeah that's okay um, so, oh, where was I going with that? Okay. So, so, so instead of trap, yes, I was hoping that you were going to say, instead of trap, we say dance, but. but oh, right. I've heard that. I've heard that. Um, I, I've also, I also like the anxious avoidant dynamic. Um, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Cause that kind of just shows it's a way that we interact with each other that has yeah. very specific characteristics that aren't working well for us. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So. Sorry. No, that's okay. I see you taking notes. You look very academic. I wanted to say one more thing about, but I don't. I didn't want to interrupt you. But oh, can please I just, do. But yeah, can I just go back do. to real quickly when it comes to both partners? Since we're going into the dance now, mm -hmm. I wanted to reiterate that both anxious and avoidant mm -hmm. are have a fear of true vulnerability. The anxious seems like they're more vulnerable because they they want closeness and stuff, but yeah. they're not actually being vulnerable and sharing who they are mm -hmm. because they really their emotional intelligence is also relatively low in my opinion please correct it's true. me but no no yeah. you're right you're right um so so they both we have get, a false you know. sense of emotional intelligence unfortunately yes. the uh, yes. anxious attacher thinks that they know what they're feeling and thinking and wanting but it's it's not usually realistic and even if they understand what's going on mm -hmm. they don't tend to be able to come in like a calm way and mm -mm. speak about their feelings and needs no. because that's very scary. Right. Which is a hallmark of the secure attacher who can talk about yes. the things that they feel and want and need without getting yeah. emotionally flooded. And, upset. and then correct me if I'm wrong, but the more that we, so when we're afraid to tell someone our feelings and needs and we kind of shove those down, mm -hmm. that in my opinion, only creates resentment and bitterness. It does. It's also then, emotional unavailability. So and then that's... <laughs> and then we lash out and then yeah. we lash out with passive aggressiveness and yeah. silent treatments and manipulation yeah. and mm -hmm. criticism and mm -hmm. accusations and blame. Yes. The tools so, of the yeah. anxious attacher to try to the control tools of the, the situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And 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 they think that they're doing some, you know, they think that that's vulnerability, but it's not. So exactly. Anyways. So let's, let's talk about the tools of the anxious yes. attacher and the tools of the avoidant attacher. Okay. Um, let's do that. Yeah. This is, um, get your notebooks out for, for those who are studying here. Um, the anxious attacher is using something called activating strategies. And I have a list of those. Um, is that like protest behaviors? Yes, it is. Okay. So, um, the anxious attacher gets their safety from closeness and somebody being near to them. So an activating strategy is anything that we can do to feel that closeness or feel like we're bringing that closeness to us. Um, activating strategies would be um, texting your partner excessively sometimes. Um, it yeah, might be yeah. fantasizing about your partner because sometimes just the mental image of them feels good to have close to you. Um, activating strategies might be, um, let me think, putting yourself in situations so that you'll run into them all the time. Um, activating strategies are not good things. I know it sounds kind <laughs> of, sounds kind of like what you want in your life. You don't. Activating strategies are actually, they're, they're pretty, they can be okay. pretty rough. Um, on the other side of the coin, uh, 
avoidant attachers are practicing uh, deactivation and deactivating strategies, which would uh-huh. be anything that they can do to keep closeness at bay. This would be yeah. over scheduling their day so that they're too busy to hang out with their partner or see them. Sure. Um, this might be having excessive rules in the relationship that the other person can't possibly meet in order for closeness to happen. Like I can only hang out at yeah. 6 p.m. because I've been working all day and that, you know, it squeezes yeah. all the closeness into a very small window. Um, I can deac- totally see a people pleaser or a, someone who has codependent t- tendencies getting in a yeah. situation with somebody like that where Absolutely. they're like, well, I'll just deal with it. You yeah, know. no, totally. Um, a deactivation <clears throat> technique is criticizing your partner um, because that, puts closeness very far away. You're right, saying, oh, right. I don't like the way that they dress. Why would I have strong feelings for somebody who wears a shirt like that, right? Hmm. They're usually yeah. kind of silly, silly or um, excessive critical things that they think in order to shut that closeness down. Right. Um, there are a okay. lot more. I just touched on a few, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But anyway, an activating strategy or deactivating strategy, pretty much anything that you do that tries to bring them closer or push them away in order to gain a feeling of safety. Right, yeah. And that's part of the anxious avoidant dance. So these people, um, the codependent, uh, overly sensitive, looking to prove themselves anxious attacher, sees this very independent person who embodies all the characteristics that they don't have. That's a person Mm. who might save them and swoop in and. Um, Very attractive. Very, very attractive. Um, They see that and they, where was I going with this? I'm I'm right back there in the moment now (laughs) as an anxious attacher, seeing an avoidant. I love where you're going. Just keep it, keep it going. Okay. So they see that person. um, And like you said earlier, in the beginning, things might be great. They actually might be especially spicy. There's a lot of yeah. sparks and chemistry usually between um, anxious and avoidant attachers on a first or second or third date. This is where you'll get the hordes of the internet talking about twin flames. I just knew when I saw them that this was the person that lit my soul on fire. Um, yeah. Are you touch- saying that mm-hmm. they they work together well in the beginning because they complement each other? Is that well, what you're, is that, is that? I think that's being too kind. I think they okay. work together well. I'm using air quotes for the folks who can't see me. They work together well because they, they affirm all of each other's unhealthy ways of yes. looking at the world. They feel yeah. incredibly familiar. They also embody all the the attributes that the other person is missing. Like the avoidant yes. attacher initially is going, whoa, look at this super emotional person yeah. who's willing to reveal themselves. This is what I'm missing. The anxious attacher is going, look at this crazy, independent, successful person who feels like they can do anything. I want that for myself. Yeah, um, and isn't it funny how those characteristics in the beginning that you're attracted to will be yeah. eventually eventually what what annoys you so much. I mean, in the yeah. beginning, he was so driven, right? And you were yeah. like, wow, he's so successful and he's so driven. He and then like so two, two years in the relationship, you're like, you're always working. It's yeah. so annoying. You're so self-centered. You never make time for me. And like, yeah. and then the, yeah. and then the other boat, the avoidant is like, you're so emotional and you're, you're so, so sensitive. Emotional. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like, I don't, I don't find that attractive anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, just a, a little antidote, um, for those listening, everybody, everybody who knows me knows that I am Eileen anxious. I'm absolutely more secure than anything now, but I used to be the most anxious of the most anxious. And I can remember on the very first date with my current partner, who was incredibly avoidant at the beginning of our relationship, he said, I want to get the quote right because I love it. It's one of my favorites. He was like, wow, you are really affectionate. It (laughs) was a compliment. (laughs) It was a compliment. It was a great compliment, right? You're really affectionate. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was a compliment. And now he actually meant it in a good way. He meant it in a good way. It was not sarcasm. It was like, he was in, but now it is. Now it's, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> we'll get into that later. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm just saying that that's an extremely avoidant person in the beginning of a relationship. He was in awe yeah. of how affectionate I was. And you're yeah. right. That turned out so, to be the thing that drove him nuts later. 
<laughs> so what's what so in the beginning what's so attractive to either partner because a lot of people would say what in the world why is why does the avoidant even get into a relationship so yeah. one because because they they do want love and connection sure they want that because they're human beings and, and most of Absolutely. us are wired for connection and closeness yeah all of us um, except serial killers but the rest yeah. of us want love and connection yeah <laughs> yes um and then they also are attracted to like you said um their their negative compliments or what, what how did you word sure. it like they're attracted um, to our traits the things that, that they we lack. aren't yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the traits that we're so, lacking in yeah so um thus begins the push pull dynamic or the anxious yes. avoidant dynamic you, or dance. usually right usually right after the honeymoon phase kind of mm -hmm. ends yeah. yep which yep. can be the which can be a number of time and it's hard to tell exactly but you would yeah. you would say at least a couple of months or something and then not necessarily it could <clears throat> start early i i okay. want to say i noticed because i had been reading and researching on this oh, okay. i noticed aspects of the anxious avoidant dance in the first week or two in my oh, relationship okay. um, yeah yeah if you're paying attention if you know if you're paying attention you know. <laughs> yeah yeah um and yeah, i would you say can pick up on it yeah i would say too that an anxious attacher is far more likely to overlook those dynamics because we really want this to be the one so true oh my gosh yeah. i just heard the best quote from somebody like i'll, I'll butcher it but i wish i could remember <laughs> they were like they were like the red flag isn't that you like like you have to make this relationship work it's not does this person work for me oh i it's, have the quote it's for how you. it's how can i make this work yeah Go i on. have i have a quote for you you're gonna love it this is at love the end it. of my book I've never seen the show Bojack Horseman. I'm going to throw that out there. But okay. when I stumbled upon this quote from that show, I was like, that's going in the book. Um, it's the, it says, when you're looking at someone with rose colored glasses, all the red flags just look <laughs> like flags, right? So it's so true. Um, yeah. You want to know the, you want to know the, the, you know, the plight of the people pleaser, codependent, anxious attacher. It's that mm -hmm. they're really not completely aware of the red flags because oh. well one it's it's familiar to them right. the inconsistency is familiar to them oh, sure. and they don't they don't have the self-worth to fall back on where they're like yeah i deserve way better than this right. in a sense they're like right. can i do better than this yeah. can i yeah and that's this so, is what i'm used to it, this hurts this is what i'm used to but this yeah. is what i'm used to yeah it's so true i i wrote something i, I won't be able to find it but that i wrote something <laughs> about the uh about you'll have to fill in the gaps for me about the anxious the anxious attacher mm -hmm. sometimes they they need the conflict because it's it's stimulating and it's uh it's like if they fight for me then i know that they're still interested so i'm yeah. almost gonna like i'm almost gonna like poke at them i'm gonna poke the bear yeah. just to make sure that they will fight for me yes in this, because you know. their emotional reaction means that they care um yeah in, in which is that so way, sad that doesn't so that pushes sad. people away no, healthy people that will always push them away yeah, yeah um it's it it makes it so that and i can remember this from my own dating adventures um it makes the secures boring because you try to fight with yes, them and they won't yes. fight with you and you're like eh, yes. they don't really like me this is not yes gonna work out. yes eh. and that's so. the big that's one of the problems with anxious yeah. attachment is that is that um they like what you just said right there they won't what they think is healthy is not like a healthy person seems boring to them yeah um music and movies aren't doing us any favors either because it tries Ain't to tell truth. us <laughs> tries to tell us that all that fieriness and passion is love but really it's like a lot of that fire and and passion that's romanticized in in oh movies my gosh. and, is, and that music is so true is toxicity and it's yeah. it is <laughs> and it's never going to stay like that. It's eventually mm -hmm. that's that's going to go away and be replaced with yeah. something else. And it's not usually yeah. healthy. Mm -mm. Nope. So, um, okay. so I, I really I wanted to pull up. Um, uh, yeah, let's do all it. we do is reference quotes here. But I, I didn't find it before our podcast. So I know I'm just going to have to think of how it was said. Um, OK, the secure relationship. Um, one of my favorite accounts on Instagram. She talks a lot about the anxious avoidant dynamic. Oh, Julie as well. Manano, yes. Yeah, she's she's awesome, and um, she has a lot of really great slides that take you step by step through the anxious avoidant dynamic. And yes. it's, it might look like um, it's. I want to say it's it's not usually started. 
by either partner in particular. It's like pretty 50-50. We'll both be doing it. The anxious uh -huh. partner is going to try to get close. And the yeah. avoidant partner feels that and is going to try to pull away. And because yeah. of that, the anxious partner is taking more and more steps forward. The avoidant partner is taking more and more steps back um, until the anxious partner is like, I'm tired of chasing. And um, this is the phrase that you love, Jimmy, the, they become the burnt out pursuer. And this yeah. doesn't necessarily happen. It doesn't have to be over years. You can become the yeah. burnt out pursuer in a single instance, right? And the anxious attacher who's saying, man, I'm actually, this is a lot of work. I, I can't keep up this chasing. They stop chasing, they turn around and they start walking away or disconnecting. And that yeah. actually scares the avoidant attacher quite a bit because deep yeah. down their unconscious fear is abandonment. And so that's yeah. when they turn around, they start pursuing again and uh, cue yeah. the rainbows and butterflies to the anxious attacher, this feels great. And they're back in 100% until yep. it happens again. Um, yeah. This can also be initiated by the avoidant attacher who pulls away first. So they might be the first one to take steps away, but the anxious partner is going to follow them closely yeah. at their heels. Yeah, you look but, like you yeah. have something to say. <laughs> no, no. Well, I always have something to say, but yeah, I, I would, I would, when I think of the burnt out pursuer, I think of mm -hmm. the person who the anxious attacher or the people pleaser that has been bending over backwards for so long. And they're just, yeah. they give the benefit of the doubt and they try to, they try to, uh, de-escalate the conflicts and they try to give you know they, they're just so used to giving in and and mm -hmm. prioritizing them and trying to make this relationship healthier even if they're doing it you know in the incorrect way yeah but eventually eventually after months or years of this you'll you'll hear a lot of anxious attachers that just give up because sure they they because they've buried so much of their feelings and needs because their partner wasn't a safe place for them that they they inevitably stop even trying and, sure um, they give up yeah. and and they that resentment takes over and mm -hmm. that whatever was holding them together before whatever was the purpose or the or the drive in that relationship where it's like well i actually do want closeness with them mm -hmm. once they become the burnt out pursuer chronically they they no longer have that they don't have that drive so there's no reason when the avoidant finally chases them yeah. they're like I I'm over you. I'm not, okay. I'm not in, I'm not emotionally in this relationship anymore. That's fair. Let me, okay. Yeah. Let's, let's urge, let's rewind. Let's not call. But that's not to say it all happens all the time. I mean, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. So let's not call it. Let's not, let's not use burnt out pursuer until somebody's at their absolute, the end of their rope. Um, yeah, yeah. if you're an anxious attacher and you're tired of taking the steps forward, you stop taking the steps forward. That's when your avoidant partner turns around and is yeah. like, wait a minute, come back. Or, yeah. or wait, I am going to turn around and face you now. Yeah. And the sad part about all this is like, you know, you know how much love I have for both anxious and avoidance, but what mm -hmm. I would, what I would, what I would want to say to the anxious partner is that like, like you deserve someone to bend over backwards for you too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want you to get healthy. I want you to get out of your anxious attachment, but at the same time, like, I want you to know how much you deserve respect yeah. and consideration and reciprocation. And if you're not getting mm -hmm. those things, mm -hmm. then like, that doesn't mean you need to fight harder so right. that they'll see your worth. Yeah. That means yeah. that you need to like, that's what kind of boundaries are all about. Cause the, the anxious attacher and the codependent and the people pleasers, mm -hmm. they don't have very good non-negotiables. If you ask them like, when, 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 when are you planning on you know, giving up or like, they don't. you know, giving, yeah. like, they don't, they don't know. <laughs> they don't, they don't know how much neglect they're supposed to um, tolerate is right. my point. Right. And that's so dangerous and so unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Like I, you deserve so much more than that. Yeah. Anyways. Let, no, so hey, can let we, me, can let, we before go you, into before the you conflict on. cycle? Yeah. Well, before you move on, I really yeah. want to say something to the please, very please, please. few number of avoidant partners who may be, <laughs> if there are avoidant people listening to this, Frank, yeah. Wow. Thank He's you avoidant so much, for Frank. sure. Yeah. He um, is. I yeah. wanna I wanna say to the avoidant partners too, you are capable of stopping yourself from running. I know like yeah. they might not feel like that, like, oh I I just I'm not somebody I'm not built for closeness. I can't do this. I wanna let them know that I have personally seen avoidant people work through their issues and be able yeah. to be everything. 
that their anxious partner wants them to and not that. hate their life. They don't hate it. Yeah. It actually feels good. So it's, it's possible. Yeah. And Frank, you're not the enemy. Don't ever let no. us think. Don't ever. No. I hope you never hear us say that you oh. are less than or whatever. This is a Julie Monano quote, too. The dynamic yeah. is the enemy, not your oh, partner. Right. The that. dance is the that. enemy. That's what we're the fighting here. Are... Mm -hmm. Yep. Can yeah. we go through the can we go through the conflict dance? Because um, yes. because a lot of yeah, because I wanted to go through what that looks like for people. Please do. Yeah, please. Okay. Do. So you 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 jump in, please. Don't let me don't let me. No, I, so, I will. Yeah. So this is what happens in 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 a lot of um, in a lot of the anxious avoidant conflict dance mm -hmm. so the the anxious has some let's say need that uh, you know how i always go back to the dishes you know oh, how yeah. I always, it's <laughs> those a great example dishes. it's a great example so the 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 people pleaser or the anxious attachment they always do the dishes and they always pick up the slack even though they've asked their partner to be, be this is this is a mutual chore they yeah. always just do it and and they kind of have that resentment that's always there and Mm -hmm. There's no real trust in this relationship. So anyways, one day they finally decide, I'm about to tell Frank what's up. Mm -hmm. So Carol, is that her name? Fiery. Is Carol, is that, was is it Carol? Carol? That's a great or name. Or Carolyn. I can't remember. It was either. I think it was Carol. Yeah. Okay. So Carol, eventually yeah. Carol comes to, she comes to Frank, but she's, she doesn't just come like, hey, this is what's on my heart. Do oh, you have a moment? Do you no. have a moment? No. She no. comes guns blazing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. <comes> <laughs> So, I've so been that's Carol. mistake. I know that. That's mis yeah, I know <laughs> so how that's she comes to this situation. <laughs> that's mistake number one. We can mm -hmm. all agree that when you come at someone with criticism, they yeah. don't need to have avoidant attachment. If somebody comes at me with criticism, I'm going to feel attacked. Yes, a like, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have avoidant attachment to to. <laughs> to run. That's just a people thing. Yeah. That's just a people thing. So. So number one is we have to check ourselves before we're coming at somebody. And, and before I forget, it is okay that you have a complaint. You're allowed to yeah. have a complaint in your relationship. Your relationship should be a safe place to where your dynamic is such that you are, as Gottman says, there should be a five to one ratio where you're saying five positive things to them. You're, you're admiring them. You're appreciating them. You're right. loving on them. But this and, is the one scenario but this is where the one, you need yeah. to bring up. And, and um, then that's perfectly okay and so reasonable. Good. No, it and is good. Is, it's a good thing. And it's to bring good <laughs> because this is yeah. because because we have to remember that conflict isn't bad. It's an opportunity for closeness and connection and repair yeah. Yeah. and um, for you to understand your partner better. Okay, I love it. So, so I think Carol, you're, you're trying to say that step one for Carol is to check one. check her fire and check make fire, sure Carol. she can get to a spot where she's not completely ablaze when she yes. goes into this situation. Because criticism is never going to be taken well, and mm -hmm. especially if they're avoidant. But anyway. <laughs> right, right. So we're gonna, so our goal is to avoid disrespect, criticism, and blame. Now, somebody would say, well, how, how am I supposed to how even bring up that? a complaint? Mm -hmm. Well, well, we just speak where we take accountability for our own feelings, but we can still say, hey, we talked earlier about the dishes being a mutual chore, but this week I've done them every single day and you know, it just, I'm just letting you know that it really makes me feel abandoned or it I makes me that. feel, you know. Yeah. Nonviolent communication, which is another wonderful book that you might want to check out if conflict yep. is, t is tough for you. Um, yep. Nonviolent communication would say that revealing how something that's bothering you makes you feel is, um, is a good way to go about it. Rather than focusing on the thing that they're doing wrong, talk yeah. about the situation as it stands that you notice. Yep and yep. how it affects you. Yeah. Um, now, that is not to say that just because you use kindness and vulnerability that they are going to respond in a positive way. Maybe so that's not. where we go back. That's where we go back to if someone is avoidant. Now, mm -hmm. in my mind, if someone's avoidant, we've already talked about their, they have a fear of being seen as a failure. They don't want to be the bad guy. There mm -hmm. might be some shame there. Mm -hmm. So this is why you'll hear all over the internet, especially when they're talking about their avoidant partner that why does my partner always feel attacked when I bring up my feelings? Mm -hmm. And that's why, because of all the things that we talked earlier. But so once you're in this dynamic, Carol comes at him guns blazing mm -hmm. or calm, doesn't matter. If he's avoidant, 
he has a high propensity. Now he's going to feel attacked. So the dance has begun. Where yes. she's Cue she's accused she's a, <laughs> she's accused she's accusatory mm -hmm. or critical mm -hmm. or blaming. He's now attacked. Why does everything have to be my fault? Like why do you have to make such a big deal about nothing? Why am I the bad yeah. guy? And what does that do for Carol? She when feels she hears minimized, that, right? she, she feels, feels minimized, she feels unheard, she yeah. feels disregarded. Yeah. And so what does she do? She either she either gives up or she Or the explodes. flames rise higher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's That's just what I would do. <laughs> it's just fuel to the fire. It's yeah. just all of a sudden when somebody says that to you, now your blood is boiling because one, you came into this with some resentment built up. Yeah. So they haven't even seen the full extent of your rage yet. <laughs> so now you're going to finally let them have, you know, Frank, you're in for it now, buddy. Cause like, yeah. I'm going to bring up everything of why you're just a garbage partner. And <laughs> oh. now, and now Jimmy, that, I've done that <laughs> so many times. <laughs> it hurts to hear. Yeah. Okay. So that's what happens. And yeah. so essentially, um, the anxious person we already talked about feels unheard and, and dismissed. The avoidant yeah. feels unfairly blamed. So, yeah. um, and that cycle just goes round and round as you guys are both kind of just like getting into this infinity loop. Where right, it's just, right. Well, let's see. Yeah. So, so Carol's yeah. fire can be seen from space, and now <laughs> Frank is um, in his mind going, yep. I need safety. This is an unsafe situation. I feel Absolutely. unappreciated. I feel criticized. I yep. need to get away. If he's Absolutely. avoidant, getting out of the situation yep. is his um, he, safety. He either, he either gets out or he, or he starts, he shuts down. And yes. he, either st he either stonewalls you, which is just completely looking off. I'm not going to engage with you. I'm not going to look you in the eyes. I'm not yeah. going to talk to you. And there's reasons why we don't need to go into that. But Mm -hmm. But I do want to go back to John Gottman's Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse real quick, because they just so happen to coincide with <laughs> all of the things that we just mentioned here, which is yeah. criticism yeah. from Carol or either partner, criticism, mm -hmm. contempt. Mm -hmm. Contempt mm -hmm. is like when I look down my nose at somebody, like like when Carol was just like about to launch into why you're such a garbage partner. That's yes, contempt. that's contempt. Mm -hmm. um, defensiveness and stonewalling. Mm -hmm. And think yeah. about how... And think yeah. about which one of those which one of those are present in this dynamic. I All got of it. Them. Yeah, Frank yeah. is is gonna. Shut we won. Down. We won the so game. <laughs> we did. It's done. We can turn this off now. No. So so Frank will either shut down or yep. the tires are squealing in the driveway. He cannot For get sure. away fast enough. Or For sure. um, this might be in a dating scenario. Um, you've finally confronted the person who's very flaky, the avoidant who's very flaky, that they're yeah. not calling you enough, that you need more time with them, that you are not going to be getting texts back. That is when they go radio Correct. silent or they're yep. dodging your phone calls. Um, yep. Yep. They, they feel attacked. They're seeking safety. That's the anxious avoidant dance. Um, yeah. Oh, no, no. It's, the dance isn't over yet. We've got the last part of the dance. So oh. a period of silence ensues, right? Absolutely. Whether that's stonewalling or yep. they're down at the bar or they're tinkering in their friend's garage for three days trying to avoid yep. you. Um, yep. Or the giving next, you the silent treatment. Or giving you the silent treatment. So here's what happens. The anxious partner actually starts to feel a little bit better because they're going, Sure. Wow, it's quiet now. I don't, uh, maybe I can do this on my own. I'm not, mm. I'm not going to text them anymore. I'm done texting them. I'm going to yeah. go out with my friends. Or Carol's like, I'm just going to do all these dishes myself and move on with my day. Why am I even with that guy? Right? <laughs> yeah. so it's yeah, true. Yeah. The anxious partner actually starts to feel a little bit better. Um, or they feel absolutely terrible in such a sure. way that they start to give up on the relationship. Now, uh, the avoidant okay. partner, this is when they've got their, it's quiet. Nobody's yep. yelling at them. Nobody's criticizing them. They yep. start to miss their partner. They start yep. to activate and they start to think of all the good yep. times and yep. shoot, maybe I could have just done some dishes. I'm going to, maybe yep. I'll call Carol up. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll not call her up and say, I'm sorry, but maybe I'll call her up. <laughs> not and, yet. Right. Not yet. But maybe I'll call her up. And I'll say, put a feeler out there. I'll put yeah, a feeler. I'll, t I'll text her something. I'm going to text her. Maybe we go to Outback tonight, Carol. Because you know yeah. that's where they're going, right? Or do you, do you need anything from the store? Just something really need, like, oh, I love just something, that. yeah. Just small. Like it doesn't. I'm not saying I care oh, about you, yeah. but hey, do you need anything at the store? Do yes. You need anything? No, I, yeah. that's it. That's it. Um, would, would you say? Would you say that it's accurate that no, this isn't? This is a generalization, but just mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. 
when you give it when you if an avoidant needs space and you give it to them, yeah. they oftentimes come back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You well, might that's... think you might think they're gone for good, but right. if you just give them the space, I'm not saying that's healthy. I'm not saying you have to do that. It's I'm not just saying healthy. Like, it's not. We're not them... recommending this, but no. yes, when they get that yeah. space, um, they start to feel safe. That's their safe place, and when yeah. they start yeah, yeah. to feel safe, they can engage. This is not yeah. us telling you give them space and manipulate them into coming back. We're just explaining right, right. what tends to happen. The reason that you yeah. got that, hey, do you need anything at the store text is because they're they're in their safe place and they're feeling safe to engage now. So can I, uh, can I, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I want to, I was just, well, I was just going to say, I don't know if we're there yet, but we mm -hmm. probably need to wrap eventually. So, you know, I don't know how long people want to listen to us, but oh, are for, anyone we running for, on time? for anyone who's still listening, <laughs> well, we're over an hour, so that's pretty good. But, oh, okay. um, well, we're almost but what I wanted to say, yeah, what I wanted to say was for somebody who's like, okay, but what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. Well, oh, we'll, we'll get we'll, there. Yeah. We'll get there, but we can't spend too much time on it. But, yeah. um, but what I was going to say was, um, that it's like we said before, just this, if this is unhealthy, we're not saying like to manipulate the situation. And there, there is times where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I think mm -hmm. that that's really healthy when you, when you start to um, understand the roles of the dance and you start to take accountability and you're yeah. like, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z differently. Yes. Even if they respond in an unhealthy way, that's when boundaries come into play and we don't yeah. have to do a long thing on boundaries, but no. when somebody's disrespecting you, you you can set those boundaries and yes. say this is what i need in my relationship and, and this is especially yeah. helpful for people at the beginning of relationships oh, uh, who are noticing yeah. the dynamic um it was two weeks into my dating my current partner and i called him up and i said hey i don't think that you want to hang out as often as i am looking to hang out with a significant other and so mm. for that reason you're a lovely person but i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna jet i don't think this is working wow. and he could not his his truck could not get to my house fast oh, enough oh <laughs> wow yeah so yeah. and i know i don't advocate that but i just mean that was a moment when i noticed this well you were standing up for yourself i was yeah. i said i don't like this this dynamic doesn't really feel great for me so it's you're wonderful. not a bad person but i don't think why that's wouldn't you work. suggest that um i what i'm not suggesting is somebody use manipulation that. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no i meant it like i wasn't saying exactly, it to try yeah. to get him to come over i was saying like no. hey, really this doesn't feel like it's good exactly for me. exactly right if so, you're doing uh, it from a place of manipulation it's unhealthy but but yeah. doing that but understanding what you what you want and need and will put up with in the beginnings of a relationship is yeah. massively healthy oh and super sexy no wonder he couldn't get his oh, truck to my gosh, house fast yes. enough he was so attracted in that moment yeah because Absolutely. i was standing up. you're right i was standing up for myself yes. and my needs um so let's see i want to i want to i want to did we close up the dance for people yes we yeah, did i think so we closed up the dance so um this might be a good spot jimmy for us to tell people a few strategies right here at the end yes um, yes for making the dance not the typical way that you guys oh, I love do that. things yeah. in your relationship yeah. Can I go? Because I've Please I'm do. Sure. I've so, got some, but so, I'm sure you do. Yeah. So we talked to Carol about starting the dance. Um, you can't control anyone else's reactions. You're yeah. not responsible for their reactions. All you're responsible for is how you show up, how you yeah. talk about your feelings. Um, don't be afraid to complain. Don't be afraid to speak what's on your heart. Yeah. Um, oh, what's the if, Gottman phrase? The gentle startup. Right? Yes. So, yes. so what we're what we're referencing is a gentle startup where we don't accuse them, we don't criticize, we don't blame, yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but even just because you come at them and say, "Hey, when you made fun of me at the party, I just need you to know it really hurt my feelings and I felt really disrespected," that doesn't mean they're going to respond in a kind way. They're, no. they, they might still invalidate you, yada yada yada. Yeah. At that point, people always say, "Well, what do I do then?" Mm -hmm. At that point you have to decide what you're willing to tolerate in your own relationships. Yes. Are you willing to tolerate invalidation? Right. If so, how much? How much neglect are you willing to tolerate? Because we can't decide that for you. So yeah. if you're always stuck in, but how much do I bend over backwards for someone who's not bending for mm -hmm. me? That's you something get to decide that you that. have to decide mm -hmm. that, that we mm -hmm. cannot tell you that. We can no. tell you what's unhealthy, but yeah. it sounds like you're already in an unhealthy dynamic sure. and you're not necessarily, what you're essentially saying is, it's really difficult to end this relationship yeah. and we can empathize with that. Oh, a hundred percent. And here's yeah. something too. 
let's say you're married, but let's say you're in a long-term relationship that you're actually very committed to, and you're bringing up an issue, they're consistently defensive or disrespectful. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Here's another thing that you can do, is you can point that dynamic out to them in a kind way. Not Absolutely. you're always defensive, but in a calm time, or even yes. in that moment, you can say, yes. hey, I notice, and I've done this yes. before, you guys, I, I notice that when I bring up an issue that's really sensitive, yeah. you tend to react in such a way that's kind of explosive, and it makes it hard for me to tell you these things. And I don't yeah. want that for us. And, and that then you say, really what, what can I do? What yeah. can I do? And here's what's going to happen. Nine <laughs> times out of 10, they will say, I don't know. Because yeah. they don't. Because they, they don't. don't know. They don't. But you know what you do with that? You say, can we talk to a professional about that? Because as oh, soon as you can get it. someone to say, I don't know, yeah. then that at least opens the door. Like, what? well, yeah. I want to know. I want to know go, hey, how we can. I don't know either. We, But I want us to figure this out together. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So can cool. I really talk? Can I quickly talk about? So we talked about Carol's side. Let's mm -hmm. talk about Frank's side. So he's the yeah. avoidant. He feels like he has being unfairly blamed, he feels yeah. attacked. He feels nagged, Carol, he feels criticized. Absolutely. Yes. So you need to, um, for the avoid, the, the avoidant obviously needs to practice emotional availability. That's really difficult. Mm, I would say, I would say counseling, if, if you're, if you resonated at all with avoidant attachment, you need to be like, yeah, you need to get some professional help. That's really going to help you, um, mm -hmm. to not have a, terrible relationship yeah. or um yeah. or um my own partner who leans avoidant he points out when i'm doing that and that i find so helpful he will say yeah. hey you're doing that thing again that we've that where you are putting unrealistic expectations onto me yeah. and I don't love I don't love the way that feels. Can we find a different way to do this and talk about it? And I yeah. soften immediately. Like I'm like, I love that. whoa, I didn't know I was doing that. Yeah. The other so. thing um the other thing that's great for avoidance is just to is to do not to shut down, but just to not say because you you feel unfairly blamed. You want to defend yourself. You want to mm -hmm. say, well, no, 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 you shouldn't feel that way because like, you just don't understand the situation. Let me explain. You want to over explain. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's best to not say any of that. And instead, <laughs> and instead just say um, something along the lines of like, your feelings matter to me. Even oh, if you just hey. have to say, even if you just have to like, whenever she stops talking, let her talk. And then when she gets done talking be like, yes, your, your feelings matter to me. Like I, I want to be someone, I, I want you to feel heard. And I love that. You don't even yeah. have to elaborate. You don't not even really. have to in the elaborate beginning, in, in the, the beginning. beginning like, no. When, you, when you're not really <laughs> good, at in, uh, good at validation, you no. don't have to launch into all that stuff. You can just, when somebody, when, when somebody knows that the other person actually wants to hear them and is listening and in, yeah. in the, like, with their body language, they put their phone away, they're actually engaging. When yeah. somebody says, I want to hear you, like your feelings are important to me. Yes. Most of the time, unless they have a some sort of issue, they're not going to keep screaming. Yeah. So Frank and all of the avoidant brethren out there amongst him, we or women or women. Oh, that's true. Yes, or women. Uh, us anxious hearts, we're actually we're a lot easier than you think we are to calm down. Really, yeah. you grab our hand. My partner will put his hand on my shoulder. I'm done being upset. That's all I need is that is that yep. moment of connection, and then I yep. and then I'm calm. Not calm. It's so, I feel better. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's so helpful, Frank. If you're still listening, which God bless you if you are, because I, I know this is. It's a long. You're, you must be on him. like a you must be on a road trip. Um, yeah. <laughs> just you being curious about what bothers her and how she feels and her hurts. That yeah. is so validating itself. Sometimes you mm. don't even need the words specifically. It's just like just you showing that I'm, I'm curious. I want to understand your feelings. Yeah. Um, remember validation doesn't mean you agree with all of her feelings. It just means that you, you, you're, you're ascribing value to them. Yeah. I, it matters to me that you're feeling this, even if I don't agree yes. with the facts or the situation or whatever. Totally. So. You don't even need words. Sometimes my partner, yeah. I'll be upset. I'll be Carol yeah. with my hairs on fire and I'm yeah. like talking very fast and upset and he'll just hug me and he'll be like, I don't know how to solve this. I'm not even sure what you're upset about, but is this better? Yeah. And I'm like, this is better. <laughs> he 
he doesn't even need to talk. It's just a yeah. just a hug is all. Now I we need have to be sometimes. very careful because if you're if you don't say words and you're just looking at her, that could come across as um, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but it's oh. like where where you think that you're better than them or like that that you're just appeasing them or you're like oh I see or you're kind of looking at them like go ahead get it all out. Got it. Okay. So this is that. Okay. Maybe. But it's word, all body language. You don't yeah, have body to. Language. You don't have to say anything. You can just say, here, I'll, do, yeah. I'll show you an example. You can just yeah. listen, like, and nod. Like, yeah. you know. Or, um, or, or you can pull a play from the therapist's book and just be uh-huh. like, that sounds really hard. If you're sincere yeah. about it, if you can try to say, say it say, sincerely. <laughs> you, I don't think, I don't think you can say it sincerely. Frank. Okay. Wait, I'm not, I'm really, that sounds I'm not a good really actor. hard. <laughs> Wait, how about how about this? It's hard to say this one in a in a bad way. Yeah. I don't want that for you. How about that? Oh, I love that. Yeah, I'm a bad actress, yeah. so I need yeah, to yeah, find yeah. words that sound good no matter what. I don't want that for you. But, I don't want that for you. Yeah. Yeah, I love and I that. Go, Shoot, I don't want that for me either. They're listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, magic. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. And mm-hmm. and just the, the last thing I'll say about it is like this is extremely difficult because we we we're both both partners aren't cognizant of their triggers, yeah. and so that's why this is so important to do in front of a professional. I don't yeah. think Emily and I could have done this um, without a professional. See, we had no. our best. We got in front of a professional, and we started to have these little fights. And we had we had a good enough professional to where they they started to analyze each little piece of the fight. Oh, that so when good. you said when you said this, what was the feeling behind that? And I'd yeah. be like, "What? Like, what do you mean the feeling?" And then like I'd start to think like, "Oh, <laughs> there is a feeling behind that." And so we would start dissecting each little comment. When he's, you know, why does he feel attacked? Why yeah. does she feel like she needs to keep raising her voice to be heard? And yada mm-hmm. yada. You, you go through all those little things, and then you learn what to do instead. And then you finally have a, f- you finally have a fight. I'm putting air quotes again, like yeah. you. <laughs> you finally have a fight where you're, but you're actually listening to each other and like validating it. and it's not a fight anymore because you're just well, like the therapist you know. gave you extra tools for that fight. Absolutely. Tools that yeah. you didn't have yeah. before. I'm really glad you said that too. I think, um, part of the reason, uh, part of the reason that I am having an easier time with this in my examples is because I spend all day long reading books about couples therapy. So I've got yeah, yeah, extra yeah. tools that, that the listener may not have. Um, a, yep. a, a great counselor, a great couples counselor, a great co- uh, coach can help give you tools that you may not have to turn the For dynamic sure. around. Absolutely. Or books, or books. Um, books are so yeah, great. Yeah, and sometime next year, I will be releasing a book. Um, it, it's loosely titled "The Push Pull." It's loosely titled "Push Pull: Anxious and Avoidant Attachers in Relationship." And I yeah. write every month on this uh, over at my Patreon. So it'd be yeah, Patreon.com forward slash Anxious Hearts Guide. Um, so if, if, if this is helpful, that might be a good place to go. Yeah, um, Jimmy, you talk about this stuff a lot on your, yeah. on your TikTok channel. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. I have a YouTube mm-hmm. and a TikTok and mm-hmm. wherever you watch videos, Jimmy on relationships, you already, yeah. you know, if, there you go. So either one of those yeah. places, um, anything that you can do to get new tools and new information on how to address the dynamic is going to help. Yeah. I love that. Um, Okay. I guess we should let people go. Yeah, well, I, I guess. But <laughs> this the last was a thing long I'll say, one. the last Ooh. thing I'll say to to any any of our loyal listeners that are still listening, we did we did um, get contacted by a sponsor, and it was so funny. It's too funny not to share. I yeah. thought it was I thought it was sticky notes, and, and Ricky informed me that it's actually um, it's actually yeah. to help stick your stick your bra to your yes, when you're wearing your a dress. Skin. I mean, <laughs> yes. We can't laugh too like, hard about it. We still might be pitching it later. I don't know. <laughs> Not on this episode. No, no, um, no, no. Um, so, I was like, why is the sticky note thing <laughs> contacting us? And Ricky's like, that's for people's boobs and dresses. Well, I know. <laughs> it, may be, it may be good to warn our loyal listeners that future episodes... We might get some sponsorship. Um, maybe, so try maybe. not to be off put by that because those yeah. folks are going to keep us making episodes. They're going to yeah. help me and Jimmy keep the lights on. Well, so we far talk about we've made stuff. zero dollars. So we, because because we just love talking to you. Shh, but eventually, don't, don't tell them that. Oh, Jimmy. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's I made cool. zero dollars. No, no. I mean, I mean, the future sponsors don't need to know that. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're we're going to. Uh, I'm not a business person. If anybody <laughs> oh, yeah. knows. You may cut. <laughs> um, no, it'll be so. In future episodes, we may have sponsors. Um, 
And um, Jimmy and I are going to be picking those really carefully. So yeah. we're going to try not to hawk stuff at you guys that we don't genuinely think Absolutely. is cool and, and helpful. You mean like booby pads? Like booby pads. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes they can be super helpful. Just They're saying. super helpful. I Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe I wish people could tell, I wish we I wish we had a large enough audience where we could ask them what, what sponsors would you want us to, Ooh. I don't think they would care. I don't think they care. Oh, well, I think, <laughs> I think anything that we think would help us out would probably help. Yeah, them out. so absolutely. We'll go that way. So thank you so much if you've made it this far, which I can't imagine why you would, but you know what? We're so grateful. <laughs> I, I want to throw a special thank you out. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages lately from people who say that they've listened to every single episode. I know. And we that love, is like, nuts. We're so blessed. Yeah. yeah that's so that's cool. So... If you're listening, I'm thinking of you right now, listener. Yeah. Who's been here for 11 episodes. She means, she means nuts in a, in a, extremely grateful way no oh, like that's what nuts. i mean no like <laughs> no, yeah, no. <laughs> you, you, I, I i hope that they're getting lots of tools because that's oh what my i gosh, want I know. Me that's too. what i want Me too. for the, the world of anxious hearts and and yes. secures too who just want to make things a little bit better yeah well yeah. thank you guys again we'll see you in the next one see you next time <laughs>